Hello, Seagulls. It is March already. Thank you for joining us. Today is the birthday of Garrett Morgan, who lived from 1877 to 1963. He invented the first traffic signal with three positions. So I suppose that without him, we'd all be driving in circles, right? Morgan was a successful businessman who co-founded the Cleveland Association of Colored Men, which later merged with the NAACP. He was also a philanthropist and supporter of historically black colleges and universities. And on this day in 1933, Francis Perkins was sworn in as Secretary of Labor. Our guest this week is Joan Williams. First, I'll provide some COVID-19 updates. Mm. As you transition to more frequent testing for students and employees, this keeps us aligned with increasing uh, coronavirus uh, surveillance requirements of the University System of Maryland. Feedback so far shows that SU community members are pleased that we're now using the rapid antigen test because they receive their results on the same day that they test. And the greater community appreciates how regularly we update our testing dashboard. Our positivity numbers continue to remain low. Thank you all. Two important reminders to keep our testing center running as safely and efficiently as possible. First, don't miss your test. This will save you a lot of trouble. Second, please arrive on time for your test, no more than 15 minutes early or late. We have to stick to this in order to ensure a speedy and safe testing experience for everyone. Our campus health team is scheduling up to 1,000 tests every single day, so we don't have flexibility like we did before. There are makeup testing dates built into our appointment calendar. However, if you miss a test and fail to make it up, you will lose access to all SU buildings and in-person classes until taking your test uh, at the next scheduled time. There are also new student code of community standards policies related to testing for residential students. For more information, please visit the SU COVID-19 testing webpage. Thank you all again for your participation in testing. These protocols are essential to our ability to keep the campus open with face-to-face -face and hybrid classes this semester. This week, we also began allowing limited spectators at outdoor athletic events. Please visit the Seagull Athletics website for more information. And go Gulls! Okay, at this time, I'd like to turn the briefing over to Joan Williams, our Chief Diversity Officer. Joan directs our Office of Diversity and Inclusion and other areas, and she'll share updates about campus diversity training and details about how we continue to advance diversity and inclusion even during the pandemic. Joan. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you, Dr. White. Thank you for the invitation. <clears throat> During the pandemic, we have been very focused on our strategic diversity efforts, particularly as it pertains to education and training. During the month of November, we rolled out a pilot for our diversity training courses that included our employees and students. And then we began to roll it out in December to the campus. So we have our, all of our employees and students engaged in diversity training, which are topics around diversity in the modern workplace, managing bias, and accommodating disabilities. Some of our other initiatives include, now most of our academic departments have developed diversity and inclusion committees to begin the work to strategically embed diversity and inclusion into their department goals and work that will better align with our campus-wide diversity and inclusion goals. This has included increasing opportunities to engage in conversations around inclusion, which has included several opportunities for our departments to host campus book discussions. Also, we have been engaged in other educational programs around our cultural heritage months. This month is Women's History Month. And our SU Women's Forum, they will have an event on this Friday, March the 5th, at 4 o'clock via Zoom to celebrate the women at SU. You can go to their website to get more information on how you can join 
and hear the stories of SU women as we celebrate Women's History Month here. Some of our student resources include many support groups for our student populations across campus, including our international students, our LGBTQ plus students, and students of color. If you're interested as an employee or a student in joining any of these support groups, you can contact the Counseling Center for more information. We were really excited to kick off February and Black History Month this year with an anti-racism summit where we had over 400 to attend. This was a collaboration with our Promise faculty learning community and other offices across campus in a way to engage in learning about anti-racism and how to dismantle those structures. We followed that up with our 21-day anti-racism challenge where we have had over 200 individuals engage in a more in-depth learning and reflective opportunity to learn about their personal actions needed to develop spaces that are inclusive, that promote respect and belonging. People can go to the Office of Diversity and Inclusion website to still engage in the 21-Day Anti-Racism Challenge. That and other resources are available on our website, as well as our cultural events uh, page, where you can learn about activities that are happening across campus that are diverse in nature. So again, we invite you to go to our website and engage and learn what's happening across the SU campus as it relates to diversity and inclusion. Thank you, Dr. White. Thank you, Joan, for all that you and your team have done as our campus continues to maintain its commitment to diversity and inclusion. Okay, at this time, I will take any questions that you may have Please send them via email to stayinformed at salisbury.edu. Eli Maudlin, what are people asking about today? Thank you, Dr. White. The first question is about the new testing protocols. When should a student or employee expect to receive their results? Well, with the rapid antigen test, um, we get the results very quickly. And so you should expect to get the results of your test uh, near the end of the same day that you test. And what about testing during spring break? Will the testing center be open? And what happens to those that miss their test because they're not in the area during spring break? The testing center will be open uh, during spring break. They're open seven days a week now. And, um, but if you are going to be uh, out of town for uh, those two days of spring break, Monday and Tuesday, um, you should watch out for an email uh, that will allow you to schedule an alternative date. Thank you, Dr. White. The next question also relates to testing. How do you think, or the, does the university health team think that the increased testing frequency will affect case positivity rates? Uh, the uh, increased frequency of testing allows us uh, to do two things. One is to um, maintain uh, surveillance over the health of our uh, community in general. But uh, the other is with the more rapid testing, we can better catch individual uh, cases as they arise and further prevent the spread of disease on our campus. So it makes us all a little bit safer. Thank you, Dr. White. The next set of questions are all around the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, have any qualified student, faculty, or staff members at SU been vaccinated, and if so, have they been vaccinated on campus? So there are uh, people uh, who are qualified to receive the vaccine um, as educators at part of our SU community, uh, but they have not been vaccinated on our campus. Uh, they have been vaccinated uh, by the county. And Dr. White, along those same lines, um, why don't all employees and students receive the vaccination link? Well, um, there are only a limited number of links that come out uh, each week. Uh, sometimes it's as many as 300, sometimes it's actually zero. Um, but uh, there are uh, as many as 2,000 people who are potentially uh, eligible for the vaccine. So we only send out a limited number of links, uh, to emails to people, uh, depending on the number of um, uh, vaccines that might be available for that week. 
Thank you, Dr. White. That looks like all the questions for today. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us. Even as the weather warms, um, please continue to heed public health guidelines related to crowd avoidance, physical distancing, and proper face mask use. Next Thursday, I look forward to welcoming our Vice President of Student Affairs, Dane Faust. We'll see you all back here uh, next Thursday. Thanks, everybody.